Welcome. Due to the COVID in progress. Welcome. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, legislative hall remains closed to the public, and we are meeting virtually under the authority of the virtual meeting procedures adopted by the 151st General Assembly in-house concurrent resolution number one. This meeting is held via Zoom and broadcast on the General Assembly's Joint Committee YouTube channel. If you have questions or comments about this meeting, please direct them to legislative council at delaware.gov or call the Division of Research at area code 302-744-4114. Because we're meeting virtually today, I have asked Mark Catrona to call the roll for attendance and voting purposes. Mr. Catrona, please call the roll. Thank you. Uh, Representative Dukes. Representative Dukes absent. Senator Hawker. Present. Senator Hawker, present. Senator Lockman. Present. Senator Lockman, present. Representative Longhurst. Present. Representative Longhurst, present. Representative Mitchell. Present. Representative Mitchell, present. Senator Pettyjohn. Present. Senator Pettyjohn, present. Mr. Speaker. Present. Mr. Speaker, present. Mr. Pertem. Present. Mr. Pertem, present. Representative Short. Present. Representative Short, present. Senator Townsend. Present. Senator Townsend, present. Mr. Pertem, the roll call reveals nine present, one absent. Thank you. A quorum being present, Legislative Council is in session. Before we begin, I want to note that I have verified the identity of each member of council to my satisfaction. With that said, the first order of business is the approval of the May 4th, 2021 meeting minutes. Is there a motion? So moved. So moved. We have a motion. Uh -huh. by, we have a motion and a second. Mr. Catrona, please call the roll. Thank you. Representative Dukes. Representative Dukes absent. Senator Hawker. Y yes. Senator Hawker, yes. Senator Lockman. Yes. Senator Lockman, yes. Representative Longhurst. Yes. Representative Longhurst, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, Representative Mitchell. Yes. Representative Mitchell, yes. Senator Pettyjohn. Yes. Senator Pettyjohn, yes. Mr. Speaker. Yes. Mr. Speaker, yes. Mr. Pro Tem. Yes. Mr. Pro Tem, yes. Representative Short. Yes. Representative Short, yes. Senator Townsend. Yes. Senator Townsend, yes. Mr. Pro Tem, the roll call reveals nine yes, one absent. Having received the required vote, the minutes are approved. Uh, first on the agenda, we have the Legislative Council report. Mark Catrona, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Pro Tem. I will be brief. I just wanted to thank you all for your support this session. Uh, thank the staff for their hard work uh, in the midst of a pandemic. Um, and also would like to just thank the staff in the other areas throughout the legislative uh, hall for their support uh, this year as well. Um, I have no further report. If you have any questions, I'm available. Do we have any questions for Mr. Catrona? Comment. Do you have a comment? I'd like the shorter version, Mark. I'm sorry? But I like the shorter version. All right, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, <laughs> next on the agenda, we have uh, the Controller General's report. Ruth Ann Jones, Controller General, I have heard nothing but good comments about you and the uh, budget markup process. Uh, so the floor is yours. <laughs> thank you very much, Mr. Pertem, and thank you um, for your comments. I cannot brag about my staff enough. <laughs> We closed out markup in two days, which I'm pretty sure is a record. Um, and all of them were just prepared at every turn of events um, as we went through. So I could not be more grateful for the group that we have in the office. Um, with that said, JFC did meet, operating budget um, was voted out as well as the one-time supplement bill. We are going through um, final edits right now and hope to have that uploaded in Dallas shortly. Um, the next things happening in the budget process, DFAC meets on Friday the 18th at 1030. That will be the final meeting for the fiscal year. And then bond bill um, committee is scheduled to come in 
on the 22nd through the 24th each morning at 10 a.m. And then we will schedule them to come in after session if necessary to make sure that we can get the um, bond bill done hopefully as quickly also. After that, um, JFC will have to come in for a final time for grant and aid. Um, and so that will likely occur somewhere between the 25th and the 29th, um, pending further conversations with the JFC chairs on when they want to schedule that. So that is my report and I'm happy to answer any questions. Uh, Representative Longhurst. Thank you, um, Mr. Pertamp. First of all, I want to thank Ruth Ann Jones. Um, we as this body hired her in this new position this year. And I just want to say, I think she did an amazing job coordinating with the new caucus members and with us and keeping us all abreast of everything that was going on. So I just want to give you a big kudos for your first year as the controller general. I think you did an amazing job. So thank you very much for your work. Thank you. Good Mr. Speaker, I just said ditto. I, I can't say I, I can't say enough good things about Ruthann. She is the employee of the decade, as far as I'm concerned. Make a I'll motion to call the roll. I'll, I'll chime in. Just a member of JFC having experienced that in real time. Thank you um, to you, Ruthann, and the whole team for for making it um, you know as pleasant as an experience as possible. I felt informed. Um, you know, throughout the process by every member of the team. So thank you. Look forward to, to doing more. Yes, uh, Ruth Ann Jones was not the only person in a new position no. through this process. However, as a former bond bill chair, um, I had the privilege of working together with you and uh, had absolute confidence that this the process would move smoothly and successfully this year. Um, I don't believe we need a motion for that. Um, any, if there are no other comments, um, we have legislative hall project update. Uh, Mark Catrona. Hello again. Um, this uh, is a time to discuss some upcoming legislative hall projects, and I really would just like to turn it over to Don Girardi, who's here from facilities management, so that he can. Uh, explain what's going on in the coming months. Good morning, everyone. Well, in this case, as afternoons. Um, um, again, my name is Don Girardi. I'm the Deputy Director of Facilities Management, and I'm here to give you the updates of the latest projects that have been completed and the projects that are continuing at Legislative Hall and the Tapa Building. Uh, we'll start with Legislative Hall first. Uh, just an update on the HVAC. That project is 100% complete, um, up and running. So as far as the comfort level in the building, we should see a great improvement on the comfort level throughout the building due to the HVAC project being complete. Uh, the second project is the steps, the West Side Steps. That is scheduled to continue come July 1 and should finish up early fall of this year. Um, as you all well know, we had to postpone that one due to the timing of the weather. So that one's back on schedules to start July 1. Uh, the next project would be the roof for Legislative Hall, roof replacement. Right now, the we're in final design review on the project, but as it stands, the funding is not available for the project at the time, present time. So in order to move this project along for next July, the funding would, we would have to receive the funding for this project at a cost estimate of between 3.6 and 3.8 million to redo the complete roof at Legislative Hall. Um, the other projects at Legislative Hall that is underway is in the on the ground floor. Uh, we had a meeting yesterday a kickoff meeting as far as to do the work that's gonna cover all the work around the library and on the ground floor. Uh, that entails doing the, putting up the wall for IT, uh, dividing a couple rooms. The work, the work should begin in two to three weeks on the ceiling replacement. The PO has been issued um, and that work should begin in two to three weeks. And the painting for the JFC hearing room in the IT section is scheduled to start after July 1 and DFM is actively working on getting 
LED lighting uh, replacement for the ground floor. That is the update for Legislative Hall. Uh, Tatno building, just a couple on that one. The HVAC is complete. And also the windows are complete on that project as well. So that's, Tatno is pretty well wrapped up. And again, we have some ongoing projects at Legislative Hall, which we will continue throughout the year to complete as fast as possible. Anyone has any questions, I'll try to answer them. Mr. Speaker. Uh, hey, Don, um, the H HVAC project, um, is there, I don't know whether uh, the complaint has made its way to you yet, uh, but if you go in my office, it's very hard to, uh, very noisy, very noisy from the unit that's right above the ceiling in my office. Is there any way you can see what you could do to quiet that thing down a little bit? Yeah, yes, yeah, we'll take a look at that. But no, to answer your question, no, it hadn't got to me yet, but okay. we can absolutely take a look at that. And it just be maybe a matter of, you know, putting some insulation above your ceiling to see what's going on there. But yes, we will definitely uh, take care of that. Thank you. Senator Pettyjohn. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, just wondering, and I don't recall seeing it, uh, the roof replacement. Uh, that's a, a big price tag item. Um, I don't remember seeing that in any of the recommended budgets, the GRB or his recommended bond bill. Is that something that we are, are, are going to fund through general fund? Or are we going to put that in bond bill? How are we going to do that? Um, uh I mean, you are correct. It has, is, as far as I know, it's not in the GRB. And again, it's if it if we do get the funding this year, the project would be pushed out till next July in order to advertise and and start construction of next July calendar July. But if you know the funding again, if the funding was not approved, it, it would be all the way out until FY twenty three in order to even do anything with that roof. And you know it's. We would just have to continue to patch and repair as we go. Mm. I, I believe Ruthann is getting or compiling a list. <laughs> is that something we could add to the list, Ruthann? Absolutely, Senator. That is something we could add to the list. And Don, just to confirm, that's about a $3.6 million ask? Yes, as okay. 3.6 and 3.8. Um, then again, that's an estimate. And we, in order to narrow it down, we would have to advertise to get the hard numbers, but according to a and &E firm, that is the cost estimate between 3.6 and 3.8 million to do the total rate. Right. Mr. Speaker, your hand is still up. Do you have another question? <laughs> no, I don't. Okay. I'm trying to figure out how to take it down. <laughs> By the time we get through this. I got it. I got it. There you go. Good. <laughs> okay. Um, any other questions or comments from members of Legislative Council? Okay. Seeing none, uh, we do we need a motion to add that to the list, Mark? Uh, no. I, I don't think so. If you wanted to have an official one, you could, but I think um, there's a sense of council for sure. Right. Okay. Yeah. And, and that's a process that I mean, we, those of us who've been through the Bombo process know that um, uh, that's one of those interesting processes. It's, it's far more open and transparent and inclusive uh, than it used to be. And uh, this is something that they will certainly discuss uh, uh, on their own. Uh, Re Senator Hocker. Hey, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, sorry about that. Um, being in, doing a lot of building and putting a lot of building on hold and seeing the cost of materials, unless we have a major, major problem with that roof, I think we should be put, putting it off. Uh, there's a help shortage out there. Every contractor you talk to doesn't know when they're gonna get to it. And building materials have more than doubled in the last couple of months. I, I do think though, what he said is if we did get, um, Maybe, maybe what we need to do is request half of the money for this FY with a commitment for the other half and the next, because it, he said we couldn't start it until July of 22. Anyhow, I don't, it, did I get that right? Um, Don? Yes, that's yes, that is correct. Um, 
based on advertising and you know bidding it out and getting the bids back that you know if if we were funded this year, we would you know we could start it next july but if not it would be pushed back another year uh, gerald did you want to follow up on that yes if you go to the bidding process now with the cost of materials where they are on i know contractors have added a hundred dollars a square foot to the cost of even building a house I put all my projects on hold and are all estimating very high and bidding very high because of what materials are doing. And I just don't think now's the right time to go out to bid. What would the timeline for bidding be if uh, we, we allocated half the money this year? Would that be something you would wait till January to, uh, to go to bid on? It just would all be based on timing and I'm not sure if we could actually award the project without having the full funding uh, available. Normally we would have to have full funding for the project in order to bid it. And, you know, again, it'd be great to get, you know, if you were to get half now, but that still wouldn't change the timeline. Uh, we wouldn't be able to bid it unless the project was fully funded. Representative Mitchell. Thank you. Um, I've had a couple of roofs done, so I've dealt with contractors in the past. The most important uh, question is, Don, I'm sure your team has evaluated the roof or had a contractor up around the roof to evaluate. How concerning is this? Is this something that needs to be done immediate? I mean, that's the clear question. Well, as as I'm sure everyone in the, there knows, uh, especially Senator uh, Sports Call said that, you know, the, we've had ongoing leaks throughout the building that we've been kind of patching, you know, throughout the last two or three years. So if you're asking my opinion, if it's, does it need to be replaced? I would have to say, yes, uh, it is concerning that, <clears throat> excuse me, with the, you know, amount of money that we're putting into the building and then the, you know, to have the roof leaking, it's, it does cause problems throughout the building. So it would be nice to have that, you know, roof repaired as soon as possible. Yeah, and that, and that was the answer I was looking for from you, whether or not it needed to be done now. Um, but with that being said, you made a good point. If the roof continues to leak, it's not only the damage to the roof, but the damage caused on the interior as a result of that leak. So I think that clears things. Thank you. Very good point, uh, Representative Mitchell. Um, Representative Longhurst. Uh, thank you. I just, I, I guess I want to echo what um, Representative Mitchell said. Um, I think, I think we should, I mean, we've had so many issues with that roof and it's in bad condition and to, to delay it could be a bigger cost if we don't address it now. And we have a lot of work that we have to do next year. And we've already not been in the, in the general assembly in the, in the hall for almost a year. So I can't see something happening and then us not being able to be in legislative hall. A second year so um i think it's important that we continue with the funding and and move forward with it mr speaker i would um so gerald's right in what he says about how much money more money it costs right now than it does might later on um part of the increase in the cost or big part of the increase in cost is the unavailability of lumber because they shut down lumber plants out west um, now because of because of uh, the coronavirus hopefully now that the, the hopefully it's a thing of the past behind us as much as possible those plants will be open again i would say that if we do go ahead and fund it to delay the bid process as long as possible within the time frame you're talking about don to get it at the back end of the process so that possibly the cost of lumber and, and materials will come down some in the next few months. So just something to consider. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with the cost of the lumber, but uh, again, this is a situation where, you know, do we wanna, you know, you know, it, on the average, it's about a 30% increase on pricing on what's being added to the projects. Um, you know, again, you could hold off on to it and then run the risk of, you know, damaging the building within the, you know, again, some of the, where the leaks are, they can actually get down inside the buildings, which could cause other issues, you know, structural issues within the building. So again, it's, I understand the cost, but I still believe it would be worth funding the project 
<clears throat> excuse me, at the present time in order to you know, get this on schedule to meet our next July deadline. I agree with that. I, I agree with funding it. I agree with uh, getting money out there. I just, if we bid it today, I think if you waited two months or three months and bid it, it'd probably be a different price. That's all. Just yeah, I mean, again, we, we would ever talk. I'm sorry. You, but, you do what you do best and, and we'll do what we do best and complain. So, um, but it is, it is an issue, as you well know, we've had enough instances where the water's come all the way down into the chamber that uh, we probably need to get it all worked out and fixed. Okay, uh, any other questions or comments? Okay, Don, thank you so much for your report. Um, we, will, uh, we will move on to uh, the schedule for future council meetings. Uh, Mark. All right, um, so I wanted to um, just raise, we don't have a, another uh, council meeting scheduled, obviously uh, sessions ending, uh, but we do typically have them in the fall. And there is at least one issue um, that we would like to bring to uh, council, which is the uh, final adoption of the continuity of operations plan for the legislature. Um, so uh, if uh, council would be amenable to scheduling to at least two meetings in the fall. Um, we typically meet on Wednesdays. We've typically met in September and October. My initial proposal would be Wednesday, September 15th and Wednesday, October 20th. I recognize redistricting is happening. Um, so I look for your advice. Those are a little ways out, but they seem pretty good to me. Uh, Representative Schwarzkopf. I would only say that we are definitely going to to be coming back in session. Uh, I prefer to have a little flexible meeting so that we can schedule it on the days that we're back in session. Uh, so we'll have another trip to Dover or whatever, because I don't, I doubt whether seriously whether we'll be doing virtual at that point. Um, but we will be going back in session, obviously to, to deal with redistricting um, and we can handle it then I would think. But we don't know when that is, but <laughs> at this point, so. Uh, I don't have a problem with putting tentative schedules out there, but then maybe adjusting them as we get closer to uh, redistricting and see where we are and, and what, we're, what we're doing. Certainly wouldn't be the first time we made adjustments. <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> so, all right. Um, any other questions or comments? Uh, uh, Representative Short. Thank you, uh, Mr. Pro Tem. You just brought up an issue, the speaker just brought up an issue, I guess I'm really curious about with regard to coming back in session and when we're actually gonna do that. Do we, I noticed on the agenda there's this post pandemic participation in committee meetings, which was, was skipped over. Uh, I guess the real question is where, where are we in the early post pandemic aspect of, of the world? I mean, um, you know, I had a coffee this morning, probably had 35 people there in the senior center and, you know, the senior center was having a, an event today and everybody was there. They weren't wearing any masks. Um, you know, the data, I mean, we're all the same, follow the science. The science is pretty indicative of, of, you know, where all the deaths have occurred in the, in the higher ages and how all these numbers have improved dramatically. But, I guess the question is, you know, what are we doing for June and what are we doing for the rest of the year? I mean, this past week, I don't know if you went anywhere, but there's nobody wearing a mask and, and the public is attending things as if it is a post pandemic yet, you know, next week there's nobody in the hall, but I guess there's nobody in the hall, no public in the hall and nobody attending committee meetings. So I don't know if it's appropriate for that discussion to occur here or how you're going to handle it, but you know, I think I think it's time for us to get back in. If some of our legislators don't want to attend, then they can. If they're not comfortable, they can virtually attend. But we ought to be able to get back in the building, and the public is out and about. I mean, beat no disrespect, but I rode down to your area and I turned around and came back home. I, there was no no need to go there. It was, you know, I checked the cameras on Dell Dot. I'm like, there's no way you can get there from here. You know, it's just kind of weird. And and here we are going to play it on the 
on the other end of the of the uh, of the spectrum. Nobody in the building and that sort. I don't want to belabor this. I just, you know, you know. It's just that I just think that we're we're the odd man out here now. Danny, this is what I wanted to ask you if I could call you afterwards because we do have a plan that we're, we put together. And I just want to give you a call and share a plan with you, um, and just go over it with me. Well, that would be great because I just yeah I'm getting pressure from folks. I don't know if anybody else we just, is. We just we just had the conversation this morning and and finalized certain things and there's a couple things still hanging out there. But um, when we get done this, I'll give you a call. We'll go through it. Yeah. A couple of things that are important around here is while most, if not all of us, have been vaccinated, a number of us have children who either weren't yet eligible to be vaccinated or became eligible but haven't been through the entire process. Uh, one of the things I did this weekend, I was at Delaware Memorial Bridge, and President Biden was there with his grandson, and his grandson had only had the first vaccine. He was wearing a mask. There were a few others at that event who were wearing masks, and some volunteered why they were doing so. Um, you know, we have uh, people who are still potentially vulnerable, but I agree with you, uh, Representative Short, we are in a, a much, much better position than we have been. Um, I saw today we are below 50 hospitalizations. We are down to six critical. Our percent positive is down to 2.2%. Um, those are all numbers that are incredibly encouraging. Um, we've been told that you don't want to spike the football before you're in the end zone. <laughs> and, and I think we've done that a couple of times already. Uh, but, uh, but I feel cautiously optimistic. Um, I would like to, uh, you know, we are back in, in for, for legislative session in legislative hall, but still doing committee meetings uh, virtually. So, um, you know, we've, we've gradually ratcheted things up and uh, I expect that uh, we will take further steps that will start next week and possibly do transitions throughout the month of June. Um, Senator Townsend. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, to, to Representative Short's point, I guess I just want to note, and, and you did, Senator Sacola, a little bit in terms of uh, President Biden's grandson, um, plenty of people, you know, when I got grocery shopping and whatnot up here are mm -hmm. still wearing masks. Um, I think some are definitely doing it. Arguably, anyone's wearing a mask is, is, is closer to sort of doing so with a, a precaution at this point, um, depending on the situation overall. But but maybe it's geographic, maybe it's not. I just think I just think it's important to note number one that there'll be plenty of people still wearing masks for a while, and we'll see kind of how mask wearing ends up being something that more people do um, every year. Frankly, just like other countries who went through flu crises earlier in the century. Um, adopted mask wearing as like an annual thing, frankly, to prevent other spread of other disease. But, but I think more importantly, as I understand it, a lot of the guidance relates to the fact that people who are vaccinated have uh, therefore different risk profile or lack thereof with regard to, uh, you know, interacting with people uh, in closer quarters without wearing masks, if you're vaccinated. And I think the idea that is that there are plenty of people obviously who are not vaccinated. And I just want to say, since we're talking about this, you know, in, in like council here, I think it's important to note that distinction that if people choose not to get vaccinated and if people don't support a system whereby it's easier or possible at all for us to figure out who is or isn't vaccinated, then I think in many ways that changes the kinds of interactions that we are supposed to have and still stay within health guidelines. So we need to be bear in mind that distinction um, with choices come consequences. And I think we're still, I, I think we as a society, I'm not talking about legislative leadership, just we as a society are, are still figuring out where this all fits together. Representative Short. Yeah, it, it, I appreciate Senator Townsend's comments, but don't you know misconstrue what I've actually said here. You know, if people want to stay virtually, that's fine. If they want to wear a mask, that's fine too. But we've all said all along we follow the science, and right now, you know, the inoculation rate is reaching close to 70 percent. We'll probably reach that goal sometime uh, later on fully. And there's a good unknown in this of the number of folks who have actually had COVID who have their own immunization uh, level within that. So I'm just saying that, you know, to stay completely locked down, that's all I was saying, completely locked down and not allow anyone else into the hall is I think not what is normally done out there. I mean, in my coffee, this, my coffee this morning, a couple of people that spoke up were teachers and saying, 
hey, we're back in. Why aren't you guys? So that's that's all I'm saying. You know, we're catching a loop. Maybe you guys don't get anybody say that to you, but I get hey, it. We do. That's what we're working on, and and that's what I want to talk to you about when we get down here. All right, if we can talk about it, that's great. I'm just voicing it. I think this is the group that makes that decision, and um, thought I'd bring it up. It was partially was on the agenda: post-pandemic participation in committee. We're meetings. good. We're good. We're good. <laughs> The intention was to call you before this meeting, but I had another meeting that went right to this meeting and I didn't have a chance. That's why I texted you. I understand the governor might be more important than me. I'm totally on board with that. So yeah. just kidding. I think Pete sometimes thinks Representative Short is more important than the governor. So <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see what he says are, after this meeting. I will, I will say this there are times he is. <laughs> Yeah. Thank, yeah. thank you. Appreciate it. Senator Lockman. <laughs> thank you. Was um, I just had a question, actually. I was wondering if anyone was tracking. I just did a quick Google on CSG, but do we know how many, uh, I guess a lot of legislatures are already coming out of session, but for those that have been recently in session or are still in session, are allowing public access? Has anyone been looking into that? There, there are so few that are still in session. Yeah, what I do know cool. is a lot of states still have mask mandates in state buildings, especially those that have adults and children like schools. Um, sure. So, you know, there, there are those variables that, uh, that are still out there. I know the courts are looking at adjusting things and it's possible that family court may be slower than other courts, uh, mm -hmm. you know, so, so there's, um, you know, but but it's possible they'll all be on the same page. So you know, we'll see what they do. Um, we we are trying to work to get uh, a good path forward where there's more openness and inclusion. Uh, but we don't want to necessarily put uh, our members, our staff, or the staff's children, or our members' children at, mm -hmm. at an unnecessary risk. Because while this is getting close, it is not yet done. And yeah. uh, ho hopefully, we can we can get to the point where we could be completely restriction free. Right. So. Seems like a lot of unknowns for the next 30 days, probably. Right. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Um, it looks like um, we are <laughs> towards the end. Um, I don't have anything else on the uh, agenda here. Um, so can I have a, a motion to uh, adjourn the um, I make a motion to adjourn. And a second. Okay. okay, we have a motion second. If there's no objection, the uh, Legislative Council is adjourned. Thank you.